What is your best home birth advice? That's the question we asked our community and we're bringing their answers to you. That's right. Plus some of our feedback and our best advice for a home birth. Yes. I'm Sarah. And I'm Matthew. This is Doing It At Home. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Doing It At Home podcast. I'm Sarah Bibbins and next to me is my husband, partner, friend, Matthew Bibbins. <laughs> What's up, love? Hey. I was wondering, like, what else you were gonna. Drop I don't know. In there. Maybe I could have thrown one more thing in there, friend. but I just friend. You are my friend. You cool. are. We were friends first for a long minute before we became. Yeah, for a couple lovers. years. A couple years before you you uh, you fell for me. Yes, indeed. Hard. Yes, we know. Mm-hmm. It's another another podcast. <laughs> How uh, are you? Ah, oh, I'm awesome. I feel like I'm on a um, like a movie set. We got this big old bright light it is in our bright. face. It's bright because it's so far away because we're doing a Facebook Live at the same time. We so are. we wanted to be able to show off our our office setup. And no, I feel great. We're doing something new today. We got a cool topic that is um, uh, collab with people in our Facebook community. Yes. So I, I'm, I I'm excited. Love it's gonna be great. about it. But yes, the, the light is very bright. Blinded by the light. And like when I close my eyes, I see the rim. It's kind of like the ring, the movie. Oh, I was thinking about the movie last week. Creepy. Can't, can't yes. do it with those. That's your oh. area. But anyways, yeah, so we are live in our Facebook group right now. So perk of being in our private Facebook group, you get to be a part of things like this and watch and or listen to podcasts before they get published on all the podcast platforms. And you can engage with us as well. Yes. Ask questions, comment. And then we are, like you said, using feedback from group members in today's episode, which is really cool too. We've put it out there into the group to ask them questions and of course with their permission share their feedback and so they can kind of contribute and be a part of the show too which is so neat I, so, I think the group if you do one thing if you do one action during or after listening to this go join the Facebook group yes it's the doing it at home birth group and mm-hmm. we have fun in there there's really tremendous conversations going on it, it is a it is a support, support community yeah like folks go in there and they ask a question and you get dozens of responses quickly and it's fun to for us to see that, and then we also love engaging with you all. I love dropping in there, you know, dropping comments in different threads, and we post our videos, and it's just a lot of, it's your opportunity to to interact with us. But but even greater than that is is to interact with a community of very like minded people, and that's really what it is. So if you do one thing, go join the Facebook group. If you do two things, yeah. What if you want to do two things? You what if you're an overachiever? Things? Join the Facebook group and <laughs> sign up for our email list. You can do that on our website, diahpodcast.com. Scroll to the bottom and you'll see the email sign up. And that's where we're going to be just sharing all sorts of great stuff, announcing different things, sharing with you different opportunities, and all sorts of cool things. You can be on and in the know. Yes. On the know, in the know. The like, for example, we just shared our Black Friday sale mm-hmm. in our store. So we revamped our store. Sarah put it's some so new designs cool. in there, new merch, all different things like baby onesies, which is a new thing we put in mugs, there. Mugs, more mugs. Mugs. And then we just did Puppies, a pretty pretty legit sale, I would say. And so Absolutely. folks in the email list learn about that first. Yes. So, so yeah. all those all those links are in the show notes whenever you listen. You know, you can find those as well from our Instagram account, D I H podcast, you know, you can link out to all of those things. And what we're going to talk about today is some of the best home birth advice that we've collected, like we said, from members of our community. And we're going to share those. We're going to share some of our thoughts and some of our personal advice as well. But before we do that, I want to give a shout out to a review from a listener. Awesome. This comes to us from CJ. Was this on Apple Podcasts? It was, yes. Cool. Yes. It says, I listened to the first several episodes until it became clear that, unfortunately, we were not going to be able to have a home birth. Nevertheless, I really benefited from exploring the topic, and this podcast was a big part of my exploration. I also think that knowing our priorities helped us choose a good hospital and doctor for our birth, and everything went well. Sarah and Matthew are funny, honest, and always bring a positive view to everything. Keep up the great work. That's from CJ. 
That's awesome. Oh, so cool, CJ. CJ, you rock. Not only do I appreciate the affirmation, but just you sharing part of your experience as well, that everything went well and that through your exploration, even if home birth wasn't the final destination, that you felt more confident and more informed in the choices you did make for the hospital, for your care provider. Oh, there's <laughs> there's nothing more I could ever ask for <laughs> in terms of why we've done this whole thing. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and CJ, thank you again for listening to the podcast, first and foremost, uh, but also taking the time to leave the review. We know it takes time, you know, and, and that's time that you could have been doing anything else, but you decided to just drop that note in there. So we appreciate you so much, CJ. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you would like to be like CJ and leave us a review. Be like CJ. Be like CJ. I like that. You can go to Apple Podcasts and leave your review. You can. You can do it on your phone or on your computer. That's the space that we currently are reading reviews from. But there's other places you can do it, different podcast apps. And uh, if you let us know what podcast app you're using and you have a review there, we'll go check it out and read it on the show. Yeah, so. send us a screenshot of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> The cool. dog just like flapped his ears and it startled oh, it did. me. <laughs> we had our dog under our desk. Yes, Where he's got a little foot warmer. Uh, one other thing I want to share, you know, as it relates to that review is I had a download the other day. So downloads are the, like when we get ideas or something just pops in our brain. You know, it's the light bulb. I got one of those the other day, and I haven't shared this with you yet, actually. So I want to share this with you and everyone listening and watching. Cool. And that is, okay, I saw an ad for this service that will notify you or remind you of the subscriptions you are subscribed to, which we know now in this day and age, you could have a million of them. You know, like those Netflix, $10, nine ninety nine a month things, yeah, they okay. just rack up. And before you know it, you have a thousand of them. Well, there's this service. I can't remember the name of it or where I saw this, so I'll circle back if I do. But it will let you know ones that, like, you haven't used, basically, or, you know, remind you that you have them because you might look at one and think, oh, I didn't even know I was subscribed to that one. You know, Got cancel, okay. cancel. So it's the service that does that, okay? When I saw that, I thought, oh my gosh, that's what we do. Follow. So we help you remind you, listener, home birth community, anyone in that exploration process, remind you of the disempowering subscriptions you have. And we let you know, hey, it's time to cancel that one. And so you cancel it, but then we stay... We stay creeping for you, <laughs> not creeping, but you know, we, we hang out because other ones can pop up One, you know, you might get enrolled into something you don't even know. You click a button, click a button, boop, you're there. Same thing with disempowering beliefs and views and mindsets when it comes to birth, they might pop up and you didn't even realize it, but we're here to remind you of that, to remind you that you can unsubscribe, you can delete that yes. and what you can then do next to replace that with. So... I don't know how brilliant it sounds on the outside. It sounded really brilliant in my head, but I just wanted I like to share it. that that in terms of you know it's it's in a it's in terms and in technology that I feel like we can relate to and we can resonate with. But it totally makes sense. We subscribe to beliefs all the time that don't serve us or are basically expired, but it keeps taking our money or our energy or our time or whatever. And so we're here to tell you we are giving you permission to unsubscribe from all that junk. Our friend Nancy likes to say that what she does on her podcast is help, help them cut the BS. Ah. And BS stands for belief systems. Oh, cool. And it helps cut the BS of the belief systems that, that no longer serve. And in our case, that's, a, that's exactly what I got from what you said. You help, you help, we help people unsubscribe from the, the junk that's just not serving them to have the most empowered experience. Yeah. Cool. So that's I get it. it. That download lands with me. Cool. Awesome. Then I'll, I'll work with it. <laughs> nice. uh, hey, let's take a quick break, and then when we come back, let's do the advice. Cool. Okay. So, best home birth advice from our community. Ooh, that was it. the simple yet very powerful call out that we put into the Facebook group. We said, hey, what's your best advice for home birthers? Give it to us. Share, and we're going to put it on the podcast. So that's what we're going to go through right now with you. You ready? I am ready. And we've got a handful of, of pieces of advice that we're going to read. We're going to alternate. Yes, we are. So Sarah's going to read one and I'm <laughs> going to read one. And we'll give a little bit of our own comments on, on the advice, but I think the advice stands alone. 
And then at the end, we'll share our top piece of advice. Yes. Okay. Hit it. First one comes to us from Beth. Beth says, keep your options open. Don't get too attached to a specific vision. Maybe you have pictured yourself birthing like a glowing goddess in the birth pool, but baby needs you roaring on all fours to make an entrance. That's okay. The more open to what baby needs, the quicker you will recognize what your instincts and baby are telling you in those vital moments. I think that's great. I think that speaks to the surrender aspect, you know, not being attached, but you can be connected to a vision and a desire and yet not attached to it because then with that you allow for the flow, you allow for whatever might come up. So I think that's awesome, keeping the options open and that you might have an idea and then what might be necessary in the moment could be different. So Beth, rock on. Awesome advice. You'll see that it's kind of similar to what I have to say. Oh yeah? Great minds think alike, Beth. Nice preview. All right, so I'm going to read one now. This one comes from Rachel. Rachel says, I'm due next month to have my first home birth. 11 years ago with my first birth, I stayed home the entire time up until I felt myself pushing. That's when I had to stop and get in the car to go to the hospital where my son came out in less than an hour. I would say the lessons I learned from that birth and so far planning a home birth this time around is to step into your power and work through your fears before you go into labor. Journaling, practicing boundaries, and self-care has helped me tremendously in both pregnancies to prepare for birth. Great advice, Rachel. Yeah. I love that that Rachel says, work through those fears before you go into labor. Because there's so many things that come up, and you know, once the contraction starts, it's not really the time to start thinking about for the first time some of those fears that you didn't want to address. So I love the, the idea of working through them before you go into labor. Also, journaling, like that's a great way to get, let the fears out. How did you let some of your fears out? Talking. Talking I'm a big talker. <laughs> I, I vocalize Clearly. my emotions. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And then Rachel also says practicing boundaries. I mean, that's so huge. Whether mm-hmm. you're in the hospital, birth center, at home, and self-care. This is great advice, Rachel. Next is Natasha. Natasha says, have a warm soup cooking on the stove or in a slow cooker for your first meal after giving birth. Yes. It's such a soothing, hearty meal and helps to replenish lost nutrients. Also, if you're fortunate enough to have family, friends, neighbors nearby, consider asking for someone to organize a meal train. I used mealtrain.com recently to organize two for my neighbors. It was the best gift we could have asked for after giving birth. It allowed me to relax in bed and not move around much at all while neighbors brought us meals every night for about a week. Natasha. I love this advice. I, I love it. Thinking about the food. Yeah. Because that, <laughs> that is me. I'm always thinking about when I'm getting my next meal. Well, guess what? <laughs> so does Maya. And then half oh, the time gosh. you wonder why Maya does it. It's because I you know. Do it. I pretend to wonder, but I really know. So, But someone addressing this, like the nourishment piece, Oh, it's so great. So if it looks like you doing some planning on your end or you do have the community, which is amazing. You know, she mentions mealtrain.com. I actually just went on there for the first time the other day to set one up for our friend who is due any day now. And it's such a, a blessing to have, like to not have to worry about food when you're just in that space and you're in the little oxytocin bubble to have meals brought to you. It's just Oh, so amazing. So this is something that, you know, might seem a little bit out of the box, like best home birth advice yet. I think this is gold. (laughs) So two things. First of all, soup. I think that's awesome as well. Warm soup, hearty soup. That's what we had. That's what you had. I had this amazing vegetable soup concoction thing. It was so great. It was great. And so I love the idea from Natasha of of have that soup on hand. And then second... I, I appreciate that Natasha's thinking about what happens after baby comes out. Yep. Because so much time and energy and conversation is spent, and rightly so, preparing for the moment baby comes. But then, what about afterwards? And we've said this so many times on our podcast. After Maya was born, midwives cleaned up, they left, our friends and family left, and it was just the three of us. We had no idea how we were supposed to go to sleep that night. Do anything. Like, <laughs> where are you supposed to put a brand new, fresh, still slimy baby 
So we Googled it. How does sure did. Newborn? <laughs> because so many, so many things we were focusing on all the way up until baby comes out. And there was a lot of stuff that we just didn't realize. Like I didn't even think about birthing a placenta. I didn't think about what goes on in, in, in the birthing person's abdomen area that has to get pushed out. I, I didn't know any of that stuff. And I had no idea about how to sleep with a newborn. So I appreciate Natasha for giving advice that has to do with after baby comes out. Because yes. that's when it all really begins. Like yeah. after the baby comes out, that's when stuff really gets going. Yeah. So I love it. And it can be whatever food you want too, which I think is so great versus oh, a gosh. hospital. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, you could have food brought to you in a hospital too, potentially. Although I don't know what the situation is right now. But just that, yeah, all home cooked and you can have it right there in your kitchen, your fridge reheat all that eat as much as you want and also with meal trained we didn't use mealtrain.com no not officially we just had a friend who set it up coordinated it yeah and so i saw you setting up meal train through the through the website website. and it just looked awesome yeah cool thanks natasha Mm -hmm. all right this next one comes from cassandra the first thing that comes to mind for me when planning a home birth is to consider all of the costs associated with care We used a traditional midwife who didn't accept any type of insurance. So when I needed a biophysical profile at 41 weeks, we paid out of pocket for that at a facility not affiliated with any type of hospital. It didn't break the bank, but it's just something to keep in mind if you end up needing additional medical care and your midwife isn't connected with the hospital team. I have also learned through my most recent birth experience, baby number two born at home about three weeks ago, is to release all expectations of how you think your birth will go based on any previous birth experiences. Just about every aspect of my second birth was completely different than my first birth. Most people say every birth is different, but man, I didn't realize how true that was until I experienced it. So keep your mind open, and if you had a traumatic birth experience, just know that subsequent births can be so, so different. Awesome advice. That's great. That hit Cassandra. a lot of great points. Yeah, it did. What, what, did, what, what did it bring up for you? Well, I think the cost is, is definitely there. That's one of the biggest things that I think comes up in the community. You know, questions around costs once you kind of address or look at fears and doubts or feelings about how other people are going to perceive your choice. It's like, what's it going to cost? What does that look like? What are the contingency plans or what do we need to prepare ahead of time so yeah just considering it and like cassandra said or if it's cassandra 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 if you know like she said didn't break the bank necessarily for some it might so just exploring what your options are who the care providers are what their policies are you know if they don't accept insurance then what the out-of-pocket costs look like if are there payment plans is there sliding scale is there bartering of some kind that you can do you know just getting creative with what your options are and then also understanding that if there is something outside of that scope that needs to happen like in a hospital system and that could be within or outside of your medical insurance what does that look like too so it's just it's just great to be understanding of that and it, it just is it just is information you know it doesn't have to be something that is stressful it, it doesn't have to be i understand it can be but yet that's just about the, the choice to empower yourself through that and then what you're going to choose that works best for you absolutely and I, I really love that cassandra said that every birth experience is different yeah no matter what you had the first time whether it was two hours or 32 hours every single one is different and that's one of the biggest things that i've i've taken away from doing this podcast for four years is that Every birth story that we've ever listened to has been different. No two have been the same. And even within the same birthing person, no two of the births have been the same. We had one guest, I remember, who had five. Mm. Five different home birth stories. They were all different. Mm -hmm. They were all different. And that just, I think, is a great reminder. It kind of goes back to the first one that I read about, uh, yes, with Rachel talking about no, wait, was it yours? Was it the one you said before that? Yes, Beth. Don't get too attached to a specific vision. Yeah. Like if something happens in one way and you think that that's how it's going to be the next time, it may not. Yeah. It probably won't be. So just allowing whatever is supposed to happen to happen. Okay, bringing it on home here with Monica. Monica says, prepare, prepare, prepare. And then Monica did a list for us. So Ooh, she, she put it listicle. in numbers. 
I love it. One, physically with walking, stretching, J breathing, which she says is that deep, deep belly breathing. I'm guessing because it kind of formulates a J as you do that, like when you press out your belly and then back up to the top, kind of creates a J. Okay. Eating well. Number two, meditation, positive thinking and visualization to reduce stress, connect with your baby and focus on the type of birth you want. Three, watch, listen to birth podcasts or videos. Four, start collecting comfort items for your birth kit. Oils, candles, playlists, affirmations. And five, create comfort items for postpartum, self-care items, organize meal trains. Ooh, Good luck. I don't know that word. Go for it. Go it. Galactogogs. Galactagogs? Galactagogs. Will you look that up? <laughs> Galactogogs. Gugulies. I should have read that before. <laughs> wow, I, re I, I read these, but I guess I totally skipped over that word that I would not be able to say. Anyways, mother's helpers on rotation. Oh, they help with milk production. Oh, okay. How do you say so that So something word? that contains those? Uh, Google it, listener and viewer. <laughs> we are clearly are not the experts on Galactagogogogogos. Someone right now is listening or watching is like, oh. <laughs> like they don't know what they're saying it's just a big word all right continue it is. With Monica's okay so advice. things to help with milk production i will yes. say that and it says even with all the prep remember that babies will be born on their time your job is to let your body relax and feel safe express your needs and do so fearlessly i love prayer and worship above all monica That's awesome. that was amazing i apologize sincerely that i completely butchered a piece of your advice and yet it was so comprehensive so great hit on so many points from the physical to the emotional and spiritual there you have it monica wrote a little guide for us Whew. i dig it Whew. all right cool so that's the advice from our amazing community over at the doing it at home birth group yes and i appreciate every single person for submitting and you know big thanks to beth Rachel, Natasha, Cassandra, and Monica yes. for just contributing. And Thank you all. I know that it has resonated with folks listening and watching right now, which is tremendous. Mm -hmm. And you want to drop our two cents in there? Yes, let's do it. Two cents. Yeah. I think I have three cents, but... Oh, okay. All right. Just had to. Just had to go one more up. <laughs> I say my advice right now is to identify what your fears or doubts are and have all the conversations around them to address them to get to the root of them the core of them so if that looks like with your midwife your care provider your doula your partner your mom your friends who have birthed as well you know just i'm we said earlier i'm a big talker feelings putting them out there so that's going to be my advice when it comes to home birth that if you're going down the route of home birth look at whatever those fears or doubts might be and for some it might not be fears but it could just be whatever the hiccups are you know just whatever that could create anything other than what you want to experience or anything that's bringing you down energetically emotionally anything that could be a stressor just look at those things and employ the people the support around you to move through them and as you get more clear on what it is you're also able to identify the things that you can do to counteract that and so then once you're clear on that, then you can look at what are the tools, what are the resources, who are the people that I need to access to address this. And so I think just clearing out that space for me is my best home birth advice today. That's awesome. Amazing. What you got, Bivens? All right. So my home birth advice is about trusting and surrendering, which has been kind of a theme in, in other advice. And for me, for both of us, really, trusting and surrendering is what faith is all about, right? Being able to, to trust and being able to just let go and surrender. So I, I look at it as, and my advice is all about trusting and surrendering before the birth experience begins and then trusting and surrendering while you're in the birth experience. So it's about trusting your team that you've put together. It's about trusting your partner who's there to support you, trusting in your preparation, trusting in 
you know, the self-care that you're doing, the breathing work that you're doing, the things that you're reading, the podcasts you're listening to, trusting in your plan that you're putting together, trusting in yourself and trusting in your body and really working on any areas where the trust is a big struggle for you, where you have big, massive doubts. That's an area to really work on. And again, it's been shared before, but, you know, having intentions for those different parts of your plan, having a vision, thinking through those things that you want to happen the way you want it to flow. And then here comes a surrender piece, the surrendering it all, because it could go a totally different direction than, than the way that you want. And so when the actual physical birth experience is going down, again, tapping back into that trust and surrender, trusting everything that you've done up to that moment to get you ready for that moment, trusting the people who are within that room with you, whether it's you know, your partner or you have a, a big team, maybe you're just totally by yourself, you know, trusting in, in yourself and your body and, and what you're able to do because that's how you were built and you were designed to do it. And then surrendering in those moments where it gets really hard, where the doubts really start to come up, you know, just practicing that surrender. So trust and surrender, those are my two biggest pieces of advice. And it goes for the birthing parent as well as partner and team. Everybody has an opportunity to trust and surrender more. That's it. Bam. My three cents. Matthew Bivens, everyone. He'll be here all week. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was awesome. I appreciate it. And to come from a birth partner, too, to come from a man, a non-birthing person who has experienced birth, does a birth podcast, and I just, I love that you love being a part of this conversation and that you can riff on this and you can drop. I mean, it's who you are as a person, it's who you are as a, as a man, as a coach, and then also someone who loves birth and advocates for the brilliance of birth, and so you're amazing. I love doing I this with you. That. Thank you, love. Yes, yeah, so there you have it, folks. That is the feedback, the best birth home birth advice from our community, from our Facebook group, which once again, if you are not a part of, you need to be. So go to the link in the show notes, go to doing it at home, the general Facebook page, and there's a link to the group from there as well. And or just search doing it at home birth group. Doing it at home birth you'll group. you'll find it that way too. Yes, yes, yes. That's all for us today. Thanks so much for joining us, whether you're live, whether you're listening to this recording, however you are watching this, make sure you comment, like, subscribe, any and all the things, reach out to us with any questions or, or feedback and we love you. We'll catch you next time. Peace.